Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking a bit about still life painting, and I wanted to let you know that this painting is again part of a process that I talked about in my last video, where I've been feeling very stuck with art lately, I guess you could categorize it as art block, and I've been trying to think of ways that I can sort of invigorate myself and get myself out of this funk instead of just sitting around and wallowing in the fact that I've been feeling like I can't create the things that I normally like to create. I'm going to be focusing on one particular realm of art that has actually been a great way for me to overcome the struggles that I face when I'm feeling particularly blocked or stuck, and that is in still life painting. Now, I'm not a master at this sort of thing, but I do really, really enjoy them, and I feel very strongly about the creation of still life paintings as a whole, so I wanted to take the time to talk to you guys about them. Now, I recently did a poll on Instagram to ask you guys what you thought about still life paintings and 16% of you said that you thought they were boring and I definitely fell into that category not that long ago. Even just the name still life painting sounded completely uninteresting to me and I didn't care about them at all. But then I started to, every once in a while, I would wander across a video of an artist that I liked or some artist I didn't really know, and I would watch them put together these still life paintings and this fascination started to grow in me. And instead of focusing on the still part where it's like literally just a thing that's not alive and you're painting it, I started to focus the other way around and thinking about the life aspect. Because really, when you undertake a still life painting, what you're doing is you're giving life to something that otherwise wouldn't have it and you're showing why you think that thing is beautiful. So generally speaking, people are pretty selfish and we know that we're beautiful. A human being knows that humans are beautiful, generally speaking. So when you draw a portrait or you paint a person or something like that, you're usually reflecting a bit of yourself in that, in that we know that human beings can be attractive or beautiful or pretty or we can communicate emotion because we are that thing. We know how to communicate emotion. But when it comes to my subject here, which is a mortar and pestle, dried chili peppers, and a lemon, how do you communicate emotion <laughs> via these inanimate objects. And I think this is really where we have the opportunity to shine as artists, because I can look at these objects and I can paint beauty into them, the beauty that I see when I look at them. And I think that it's such an empowering thing to do as an artist. I'm taking this thing and I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to show you how this makes me feel and I'm going to show you beauty in it. And I really hope that it makes sense why I'm comparing this to what I normally do in portraiture because I'm communicating emotion kind of more through my own skills instead of relying on the um, expression of a character or things that we might relate to more readily like the human figure. And I absolutely love that about still life painting. I'm, I'm taking something that is still and giving it life and I've just kind of been blown away lately by the power that that has and how that can make me feel so much more confident as an artist when I can take something and make it my own and show you how I see it through my own eyes, whether it's communicating the warmth of the mortar, like the inside where light is bouncing around in there, or the depth and richness of color of the table that it was sitting on. So I take these objects and I've created a painting here that feels very warm and very inviting. And there's just something really magical about that. I know that I personally still have a lot to learn about still life painting, but it's such a great opportunity to explore looseness and color relationships as far as temperature and the value ranges of which areas are lighter than other areas. So you can come at it from a technical standpoint and take the opportunity to learn more about color theory and color temperature and how those things relate to one another. Or you can approach still life painting from a more emotional standpoint and say, I want to communicate warmth or joy or coldness or whatever you want to communicate that you would normally, for me, I normally rely on portraiture and figures to communicate those things, but you can do the same thing in still life painting. And I think that when you're successful, it's 
even more exciting because you took something that maybe didn't naturally convey that on its own and you've given it those properties like you as an artist have the power to give life to inanimate objects i know it sounds kind of crazy and a little bit surreal a little bit sci-fi a little bit frankenstein but i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that you will give still life painting a try on your own. Let me know down below if you have tried it before and what your thoughts are on the process. Another quick note, I wanted to let you guys know that from now on, I'm going to be backing down my upload schedule to one video a week instead of two. There are a lot of reasons for this and I'll talk more about it in my YouTube community tab so you can check that out if you wanna see more, but this is gonna allow me to kind of get more stuff done and do focus a lot more on a, building the fuller picture of what I want to do as an artist. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you next Thursday. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Bye!